We'll start with one Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Queen of Peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, warm greeting to all of you this morning. I'll try to present you everything that has been happening in Medjugorje to bring you closer to you. Is there anybody who is for the first time here? Well, then we'll start from the beginning. <laughs> Those who have already heard this, please have a little patience. Try to put yourself in my shoes how many times I had to repeat this. <laughs> So practically we will go 37 years backward. June the 24th, 1981 was the feast day of St. John the Baptist, so nobody worked in the fields. So Ivanka and me wanted to be alone for a while. We were two teenage girls who were 15, 14 years old. And we took a walk along the base of what we call the Apparition Hill today. <coughs> but at that time there were no houses around. It was all just uh, a wasteland, but back open. But once we got tired, we sat down exactly at the base of the hill. And in one moment Ivanka told me, I think that Our Lady is on the hill. Just like that. I did not look, because for me that was impossible, because we grew up a lot different from you. We grew up in Yugoslavia in communism, but we didn't have freedom of faith. Yes, we were allowed to go to Sunday Mass for an hour and that was it. <coughs> But the rest of our religious life was only and simply within our own families. Our parents told us to pray. We prayed rosary every night. But they did not speak to us about faith a lot. Because they were afraid of that we as children would speak about that in school. And that they could have problems. So that until that moment I never heard about Lourdes, about Fatima. I did not know that Our Lady could come on earth like that. The way I thought was she's in heaven and we prayed to her. So when Ivanka told me that she thinks that Our Lady was on the hill, I replied to her in a little rude way. I said, yeah, Our Lady has nothing else to do and she would come to the two of us. <laughs> so I left her standing there and I wanted to come back to the village. But as I was reaching the first house, I felt within myself a call. And it was so intense that I simply had to go back. When I came back, I saw Ivanka on the same spot. And she told me, look now, please. And on the hill among rocks, I saw a woman in a long uh, gray dress holding an infant baby in her arms. Everything was very strange because nobody climbed the hill. Especially not in a long, such a long dress with infant baby in arms. And there was not even this path that we have today. Path that was made by pilgrim's feet. In that the very moment I felt all possible emotions that exist at the same time. Fear, beauty, misunderstanding. I didn't know if I were alive or dead. So what prevailed within me was simply to run away. So I ran away back home. 
And at home, I found my grandmother. <laughs> and I immediately said to her that I think that I saw Our Lady. She said to me, you better take the rosary, go to your room and pray to dear God and let Our Lady be where she is. I didn't have strength to debate with her. Because I wanted exactly to do the way she said to me. Because only in prayer I was able to have peace. And the entire night I spent in prayer. Praying to God to help me to comprehend what happened. <clears throat> the next day, like every other day before, I helped my uncles. And I did not have a chance to meet other visionaries. But around the same time when I saw Our Lady the day before, again I felt the same call within myself. And I said to my uncles that I have to go back to the base of the hill because I feel something was calling me. They came along with me to see what ha was happening. <clears throat> Reaching the base of the hill, practically the entire part of the village here, the base of the hill was there. Because every visionary was accompanied by someone. And then we saw Our Lady on the same spot. But this time she did not have baby in her arms. <clears throat> Therefore, the day of June the 25th, 1981, was in fact the first time when we approached her. She presented herself to us. She said, my children, do not be afraid. I am the Queen of Peace. And this is how our daily apparition started. Very shortly we had apparitions on the hill. Because as I previously told you, that was a time of ex-Yugoslavia, of communism. Immediately a few days later, police came with dogs and they occupied the hill. And who climbed the hill would end up in prison. But those first days, Our Lady presented a few miracles so that almost everybody in the village was able to see something. For example, there were immediately two miraculous physical healings. Then the cross on the cross mountain disappeared and Our Lady dressed in white appeared. Locals saw that as well. In order to explain the situation of that time, <coughs> let me just give you an example. In communism, you learn to keep quiet. Because the less you speak, the better for you. When cross on the cross mountain disappeared, everybody was looking but keeping quiet. And then in one moment, a boy who was 25 at that time, he's here from the village, he was moved by emotions. <coughs> he couldn't say, so he said it loud, look, there's no cross, Our Lady is there. And for this, he ended up six months in prison. That was the situation we had. That there was a word mir, which means peace, written in the middle of the sky. At that time, Father Yosa was parish priest here. So when police came here and said to him that he must lock the church because masses are forbidden, he said, with my own very eyes I saw on the sky between the cross mountain and church the word me written. I cannot lock the church. But anyway, you will do with me whatever you want. So he ended up in prison as well. But the villagers, seeing all of this, and knowing us as children, they believed us and they helped us. That is why we had apparition every night on different spot. So that no one will not know ever ahead of time where we will be that night. 
Such daily apparitions I had until Christmas of 1982. That is when Our Lady gave me the tenth secret and said that I would not have her daily apparitions anymore, but that it would be only once a year and every March 18th as long as I live. But she also said that I would have some extra ordinary apparitions. Well, those apparitions started on August the 2nd, 1987. Those apparitions still have been lasting. And I do not know until when will I have them. What I know is that I will have the next one on April the 2nd. But after that, I do not know. The apparitions on every second day of each month are also prayer for unbelievers. But Our Lady never says unbelievers. Because when you say for someone that he or she is an unbeliever, you judge the person. And Our Lady never judges. She always says, those who have not feel the love of God yet. And Our Lady is asking our help. But when she says our help, she doesn't mean only six visionaries. <coughs> but help of all those who feel her as mother. Because she says that we are capable to change our believers. But only with our prayers and our own example. Our Lady asked for us to put in our daily prayers in the first place, the prayers for them. Because Our Lady says that most of the bad things in the world, like war, crime, divorces, drugs, uh, wars, are coming from unbelievers. And Our Lady says, when you pray for them, in fact, you pray for yourselves and for your own future. <laughs> Beside our prayer, Our Lady is asking our example. She doesn't ask for us to preach. She would like for us to talk with our own life. So that unbelievers can see God and God's love through us. Miriam says, I would kindly ask of you to accept this in the most serious way. Because if you were able just once to see the tears in Our Lady's face because of unbelievers, I'm certain that you would pray from the bottom of your heart. Because Our Lady says that this is the time of decisions. And she says that we who claim to be the children of God have great responsibility. When Our Lady asks for us to pray for unbelievers, she would like us to do it in her way. At least the way I comprehended this, it would mean first to feel love for them. In fact, to feel them as our own brothers and sisters who are not as lucky enough as we were to come to know the love of God. And only once you feel like that, you will be able to pray for them. You should never judge or criticize. Simply love them, pray for them, and offer them your own example. Because our example tells a lot. Because every one of us has an unbeliever. Whether it's in our family, in our working place, in our neighborhood. And this one is looking at us and our own life. And we have to ask ourselves, does that person see God and God's love through us? Because we will respond to God for this. I always share with pilgrims an interesting example. You notice that our church is always packed. One evening when I came to attend the Holy Mass, as I cannot stand for long, I noticed a little bit of space on a bench, and I sat down. 
but I made a mistake. It was around me where pilgrims from Italy sitting there. <laughs> and they all started shouting at me. <laughs> Get up, that is our bench. We were the first to come. <laughs> you know how temperament our brothers from Italy are? <laughs> In one second, thousand words. I stood up and kept quiet. <laughs> then one lady who was a member of that group came. She recognized me. <laughs> and then she told them that I was one of the visionaries. <laughs> well, after that, they offered me the whole bench. <laughs> but why am I saying this to you? Imagine if I were an unbeliever <laughs> who was invited by Our Lady to come here to Medjugorje and who for the first time entered into a church. And inside are those who claim to know the love of God. And they welcome me in such a way. Would I ever enter into a church? And whose responsibility would that be? That is what our lady desires to say. We all can learn to speak in a nice manner. Both you and me. But our lady desires that our life may speak. That it may be seen within us that we try to live the love of God. In these apparitions in Medjugorje, our lady's most important message would be the Holy Mass. But not only on Sunday. When we were still children at the beginning of our lady's apparitions, one time she told us, if you have to choose between attending the Holy Mass or seeing me in the apparition, always choose the Holy Mass. Because during the Holy Mass, my son is with you. In all these years of her apparitions, Our Lady never said, pray and I will give you. She always says, pray so that I can pray to my son for you. Jesus is always in the first place. Many pilgrims, when they come to Medjugorje, think that we visionaries are important. That it's enough to say to us because then God would hear us better than others. But that way of thinking is wrong. Because for Our Lady as a mother, there are no privileged ones. For her, we're all just her children that she chooses for different missions. She chose me in order to convey message through me. She never said my name. She always says, dear children. But she chose you as well. As she said in one of her messages on January the 2nd, in which she directly addressed you. When she said, Dear children, I invited you. <clears throat> Open your heart, allow me to enter you. To be able to make you become my apostles. It means that we all have the same importance for our mother. There are no those that she would listen to more or those that she would listen to less. The fact that there are no privileged ones, I learned at the very beginning of Our Lady's apparitions. You heard that I mentioned my uncles, my grandma. Because I'm the only one out of six visionaries who was not born here and I was not raised here in Medjugorje. And my parents are from here. But when they got married, they went to Sarajevo to live. And I was born and I was raised with them. I used to come here always for vacation because the rest of my family was here. And I always joke with other visionaries but I want to make them angry. I say, you see, Our Lady was waiting for me to come. <laughs> the five of you were here. <laughs> So when apparition started, and as communists wanted to stop everything, 
by force, they brought me back to Sarajevo. I didn't want that. Because I thought if I come to Sarajevo, I will not have operations. <coughs> but nobody asked me anything. Here, the situation was a lot different. Here, where you are now. Here, we always had 100% Croatians. And Croatians are Catholics. Even policemen were Croatians. So when they hear you used to take us to interrogations, they had to do it. They just cursed, they, they spoke loud to us. Nothing else. In Sarajevo, the situation was a lot different. Because in Sarajevo, we had the true communists and Muslims. And they used to come to my home every single day. They would turn, turn everything upside down in the house, and they would take me with them. <coughs> and I was only 15. But that's not like in America. When they say, I want my lawyer, I want my social worker. <laughs> it didn't exist here. I was alone with them. And I thought, Our Lady will help me. But when I had an apparition, she would tell me the same things as she said to them here. Nothing about me and my situation. I do not even have to tell you how lonely I felt. But with prayer and fasting, I comprehended. For Our Lady, for Jesus, for dear God, there are no privileged ones. If you have a cross, take the rosary and pray. And God will not leave you alone. And when I comprehended this in my heart, everything that was about to come I was able to endure with much more strength. The same way now here in Medjugorje, many, many times after an apparition people come to me to say, like I was healed or I came to know the love of God. But many of those people I didn't even know. Which means that I did not pray for them. But they had an open heart. And they prayed for help. A mother interceded for them. I'm saying all of this to you in order to say when you need our Heavenly Mother you don't need visionaries you just need an open heart because Our Lady always says open your heart and I will be with you so it all just depends on us but if anybody is privileged for our Heavenly Mother, the way I understood looking at her messages at every second day of each month, then we are talking about priests, or as she says, shepherds. But <coughs> she never says what they should do. But she always speaks about what we should do for them. For example, she says they don't need you to judge or criticize them. They need your love and prayer. Because God will judge them the way they were as priests. But He will judge you the way you treated them. And already says if you lose respect towards your shepherds, Little by little, you will lose respect towards the church and at the end towards dear God as well. The same way during the apparitions on every second day of each month, when Our Lady gives us her blessing, she always says, I'm giving you my motherly blessing. But the greatest blessing that you can receive on earth is a blessing from your priests from your shepherds. So when they bless you, it is my son himself blessing you. She also said, do not forget to pray for your shepherds. Because their priestly hands are blessed by my son. 
Only there. <laughs> that is the reason why I'm ask, kindly asking of you when you come back to your parishes. Show to others what our relation towards our priest should be. And if your priest doesn't do the way you think he should do, do not walk around judging him. Take the rosary and pray to dear God for him. That is the way to help him. And not through judging and criticizing. Because in the world that we are living in, people judge and criticize so much. And there is so little of love. But our lady desires that we may be recognized through love. And not that we take in our hands what only dear God is supposed to do. Only he can judge because only he knows us. I'm sorry that I cannot share with you more about what Our Lady has been preparing us for all these years. But I can tell you an example. We have this time that we are now living in. And we call it our time. And we have the time of the triumph of Our Lady's heart. As Our Lady said, what I started in Fatima, I will finish in Medjugorje. My heart will triumph. But between these two times, we have a bridge. And the bridge is our priest. That is why, especially recently, Our Lady uh, invites us to pray for them. Because <clears throat> the bridge has to be strong enough for every one of us to cross it over. Because Our Lady referred to them says, alongside them I will triumph. It means, without our shepherds, there is no triumph of Our Lady's heart. Because they are the only ones who can open the gates of paradise to us. That is why I'm kindly asking of you to think about it a little bit. When I read Our Lady's messages, I reflected on, on them a lot. And the way I understood for Our Lady, in the first place is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one God, then our shepherds, then her. I think that with this, Our Lady wanted to, to say how important our shepherds are. Our Lady asked for us to pray in our families. Our Lady says that there is nothing that can unite the family like when the family prays together. And she says that parents have great responsibility in front of their children. Because parents are those who are supposed to plant roots of faith in their children. And they can do it if they pray together and if they attend the Holy Mass together. Because we cannot speak about the importance of the Holy Mass to our children if they, if they don't see that it is in the first place for us. We cannot talk to them about the importance of prayer if they don't see us praying. Because children do only what they see in their home. And they should see that for their mother and for their father, God is in the first place. I always share with Pilgrim's cute example from my own family. You had a chance to meet my younger daughter, Veronica, but I have another daughter. Her name is Maria. And when she was only two, two and a half years old, I did not speak to her about apparitions. Because I thought such a little girl could not understand that. But one day while she was playing with her friend in the room, as I was watching over them, at the moment I heard this other girl saying to my daughter, you know, my mom drives a car. And as I do not drive, Maria kept quiet for a moment. 
but just for a moment. And then she immediately replied, a big deal to drive a car. My mom speaks with our lady every day. <laughs> so without even saying a word, she comprehended. Because she was able to see what happened in our home. That is why parents' example is very important. When our children grow up, when they leave our homes, they may try to live opposite from what we taught them, but without love, prayer, example, they will come back. Because we planted roots. After this, our lady is asking fasting. Our lady's way of fasting is bread and water. And she's asking Wednesdays and Fridays. But she doesn't ask fasting from those who are sick. She says they will comprehend through prayer what they can do instead of that. But if you never fasted twice a week so far, if you never prayed the entire rosary every day so far, I would like to recommend you to do the way Our Lady did with us. The first thing she asked from us to pray on a daily basis was to pray Apostles' Creed with seven Our Fathers, Hail Marys, and Glory Be. And do not tell me that in 24 hours a day that God gave us, we have no time for this. Sometime after she uh, asked from us to pray one part of the rosary daily as well, and to fast on Friday. The same way, you don't have to start immediately on bread and water. For example, Catholics never ate meat on Friday. You can start like that. Or as we made a deal today. Then sometime after that, Our Lady uh, asked for the second part of the rosary to be added daily. <laughs> then sometime after she had a third part of the rosary daily <laughs> and to fast on Wednesday. <laughs> when she had a third part of the rosary and the fasting on Wednesday as well, <laughs> Visionary Yaakov was only 10 years old. So when Our Lady left, he, he turned to a to the rest of us visionaries. He said, I really hope from the bottom of my heart that she will stop with this. <laughs> Our Lady also asked from us to go to Holy Confession at least once a month. She says that there is no man on earth who doesn't have a need of a monthly confession. That is why I told you that a few days ago. And I can tell you, try not to be like one our parishioner, as the priest told me. He didn't tell me who. He said, a man, gentleman came to a confession. When he entered into confessional, he immediately started speaking. I have no sins. I really have no sins. But my wife. Whole day. She's telling me, go to confession, go to confession, go to confession. And I came only to have peace in home. But I have no sins. Priest says, well, then I stood up. I shake his hand. And I said, oh, forgive me, Jesus, I did not recognize you immediately. Because <laughs> there is only one who doesn't have sins. <laughs> only Jesus doesn't have sins. <laughs> we all, if we want to look into our hearts, we will always find something to say. What prevents us to open to God in the first place. A lady asks her must have a Bible in our families. When she gives me a message, she doesn't explain the message to me. She gives it to me the same way as I give it to you. Say, like every one of you, I also have to pray in order to comprehend what God desires to tell me.
Those of you who have followed these messages on every second day of each month, you notice that they are very long. And I can remember it word by word the way Our Lady uh, said it. Only within a few minutes immediately after an apparition. That is why at the Blue Cross when Our Lady leaves us, I always have meet you with notebook and pen. I immediately dictate the message. Because later on when I come to my room to pray, I can't say what she spoke about. But I cannot repeat anymore word by word. So later on I also need message in a written form. And I also read and I pray. Trying to comprehend what God wants me to change. So when Our Lady says bring back the Bible, I think that we all have a Bible. But I think that Our Lady desires a simple thing. To open it every day. To read a few sentences, doesn't matter how much. But that the Bible is present in our home. And not just to have it standing on a certain spot to be able to say, yes, we do have a Bible. But we don't know when did we touch it last time. The same way many pilgrims think that after all these years it became something normal for me to have apparitions. But I have to tell you it's not. It's always like the first time. I always have great emotions. Because you cannot get used to paradise. I always prepare with fasting and prayer. So the day before I fast. And the night before I spend in prayer. Because I cannot fall asleep anyway. You know, when you know that something so beautiful will happen the next day, and you're so excited that you cannot fall asleep. And only in prayer I'm able to find peace. Only by praying I can remain in peace until tomorrow. And when I'm with Our Lady, I think that it's a feeling of paradise. Every mother here will understand me. I'm a mother. And as all mothers, I would give my life for my children. But when I'm with Our Lady, I do not remember my children. I'm not even aware of that I have children. I just wish that Our Lady may continue to look at me and that I may look at her. She never touched me. And I never touched her. Even if I can see her for a thousand years, I'm always aware of the fact that she's the mother of God. I'm just one of those walking on this earth. But I never felt a need. Because when Our Lady is looking at you, you have everything. You feel loved. I think this is the way one feels in paradise. Then you can only try to imagine what a pain it is when you come back after that. I have strength to, to say a message and then I go straight to my room to pray. And the whole day I pray <laughs> then I discuss with God a little, pray, cry. And God, through prayer, gives me strength to comprehend. But it is not easy. To be in paradise and then to come back to walk on this earth. This is what I personally uh, think as the most important. Now it's your turn, whatever I did not say, and you may be interested in, feel free to ask. That is why we have gathered. And if you have a question, raise your hand, so that we know where the question is coming from. Thank you. Yes, <laughs>
you know, when you're here, you feel like so much progress is being made. And then you go home and you look at everything that's happening in the world. The question is, are we winning? I mean, are, are, are we winning? <laughs> 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 but it doesn't feel like it. Well, you need to go with that glasses, though, right? Because he only invites you. And she says that you are apostles of her love. Jesus and his disciples. Apostles. Was it easy to Jesus' apostles? I think it wasn't easy at all. So why would it be easy for us? We also, as Our Lady's apostles of love, have to change the world with love. And our weapon is rosary. And for sure, we will win. Because Our Lady says, my heart will triumph. Means that our mother, our prayers, and love will win triumph. You had a question? What does the win look like? In other words, once, once I'll say Satan's power is broken, and we're, we've won, the lady has conquered. What, what does the world look like? When <laughs> what will the world look like when our lady's triumph of her heart happens? Peaceful. <laughs> when is it peaceful? It means that Jesus is with us, within us. Because only true peace is the one that Jesus gives. I can share with you my own experience with uh, St. John Paul II. I didn't have that apparition, so I cannot comment it. But I was in Vatican with an Italian priest. We were at the audience with Holy Father. There were thousands of people. At that time, Pope was passing by blessing people. He blessed me and he set out. And then this Italian priest loudly said, Holy Father, this is Mirjana from Medjugorje. He came back, he blessed me once again, and he left. Then I said to this priest, you can't do anything about it. He thinks just that I need a double blessing. <laughs> But in the afternoon, we received an invitation note to come next morning at 8 a.m. to Castel Cantolfo. I didn't sleep whole night. Because imagine to meet Pope. The next day when I came, him and me were alone. He saw my excitement because I just cried. Then he tried to speak with me in Polish. Because he thought those are Slavic languages, it will make it easier for me. But I did not understand a word. <laughs> when I succeeded to say a word, I asked him to try to speak in Italian. <laughs> and then, among other things, he told me, I know and I have been following everything. If I were not Pope, I would be in Medjugorje already. Take good care of Medjugorje, because it is hope for the entire world. And ask pilgrims to pray for my intentions. That's my experience with the Holy Father. So no more questions because of the mass attention. Okay, last one. Excuse me, you said she's beautiful and joyful. Does she laugh and joke at all? <laughs> no, she's not Italian. <laughs> now, our lady is not. Uh, she's not joking, right? If she speaks about Jesus, she's smiling. There is only a smile. And if she speaks about us, she's always sad. 
Tako da nema kod nje nekih velikih, ono, kao mi ljudi što se smijemo i to. There no joking or, or laughing with her, no. No, to je ono, posmijeh ili žalosno. Smile or sorrow. A ono što ja najviše vidim na njenom licu. What I see the most on her face. Je ona odlučnost. Is a determination or decisiveness. Jer kao kad mi majke odlučimo. Like when we mothers decide. Ja ću pomoći svoj djelu. I will help my child. What my child wants it or not. Ali ja ću pomoći. But I will help my child. E tako ja vidim izraz gospodinog lica. That is the way I interpret all this expression on her face. And the pain on her face. To je jako bolno. That is very painful. Because I saw on earth women who suffer. You can see suffering on the face of those women. But suffering on our lady's face. Every muscle on her face is talking about the suffering. When she's talking about unbelievers. And that really breaks your heart. Because she knows what will happen with those children if they do not listen. And as a mother, she is suffering. But this suffering is very painful to look at. Yes. Uh, we can finish with Hail Mary. And as we already have priests with us, we can kindly ask for blessing. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Queen of Peace, pray for us. During the session of the Immaculate Heart of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary and all the angels and saints, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.